People, today we're going to talk about when is the best time to sell your Pokemon investments. Rule number one, don't listen to me. So as much as I'm trying to be funny on this one, I'm actually serious. Don't listen to me. You do you. Just if if you already have a strategy and so on and so forth, if you know what you're doing, which most likely you have more experience and a better track record than myself, then go ahead. I'm just telling you my opinion. So don't listen to me. Obviously, it's not financial advice. The hashtag always goes in there. But uh, if I can be of any help in today's video, I'll be more than happy. So number two, as I said in number one, have a strategy. So I think it's really important to have a strategy. And uh, the following points are going to be actually around the points that you should perhaps consider in your own strategy. So let's say you buy a Lost storage box at right now, so two hundred dollars. What's what's it now? Two hundred, two hundred twenty. So let's say two hundred dollars. When do you exit? That's one thing. And why do you buy it? So most importantly is why do you buy it? When do you buy it? When do you exit? So if you buy now, you gotta already think about when do you sell. And I, as I wrote in there, you could think about you know I, I say I'm selling at three hundred. I'm selling at hundred percent. So four hundred. I mean percentage could work absolute value so absolute currency dollars euros pounds whatever you want could also work because of psychological levels it is a thing actually it's there's papers articles on it like 200 is 200 you, you wouldn't care about it as much if it goes to 220 you would care if it goes to 300 which is why you hear about you know lost oranges just hit 200 dollars you don't hear about Lost Origin just hit $207. So psychological numbers are everything. So you could also consider those. Number three, how many products do you buy and how many products do you sell? Selling, if you buy a case or you buy six boxes, you have to sell one case or you have to sell six boxes, which is goes, this point number three goes hand in hand with point number four. If you buy 36 blisters, you can sell 36 blisters or you can buy a box and sell a box. Then if you buy a box, actually, historical data tells us you will experience a booster box premium. Whereas if you buy 36 blisters, 36 sleeved boosters, or 36 packs, same thing for the case. So not only the, the product itself will demand a different price, obviously based on, forgive me, demand, but think about how many products you need to sell because it's if you are a store if you're someone who has a good network of, of a contact of people then selling 10 cases it's not going to be as hard if you're like me regular timmy who wants to sell 10 cases if i sell 10 cases the best chance i have is selling them on the open market i may not and most likely i will not have as many contacts as someone as some other larger puggy tuber that's a fact. So if you're like me, regular Timmy, then think about it. Do I buy 10 cases? Okay, but how is it going to be to sell 10 cases? Do I have historical data to back that up? And spy myself here a little bit. If you want to know if some products are selling in the European market, then I'll recommend you watch this video about my Discord bot as well as join the Discord for more. That being said, number four, liquidity. In this market, for every buyer, there must be a seller so if again let's go back with the 10 case example if you buy 10 cases you're gonna need find one, someone to buy 10 cases from you if you want to sell if you buy one case you only need one person to sell one case to now you can sell 10 cases to one person it's possible but they're gonna need to buy it as well as check on historical data if you can or just ask people that have been around and can tell you with accuracy so people you can trust if a certain product sells more than another one again let's go back with i think a rule number two it was booster box against packs now will a booster box sell more easily than single lose boosters i'll leave you to do your homework and look for the answer now another rule sell when there is hype everyone preaches buy low sell high it's true like I made a video and again, I'll leave it popping up right here. I do it on a monthly basis. 
I look both in the European Union and the American market, so TG player and car market, I look at how many, and especially for social boss, how many there are, and I've been tracking down for over six months. And again, you can go watch them, they're on the playlist that I will link. And uh, this past month, especially one example is Fusion Strike in the US, you've had double the supply compared to last month, so the month of May, which is why right now Fusion Strike have been sitting down for $220 to $30 for the past two months. Nobody's buying anymore as well as they were buying two months ago, and that's price was going up. If you see a spike and if it fits your strategy, so let's say as we, again, go back, I think it was number two, number three, I don't remember. If you make your X percentage, if you make your X dollar on your strategy and you find the hype, let's say you have a 100%. So you bought Fusion Strike at 100 and right now price is 180, 190, but there's hype, then you may consider selling now because there is hype. Hype means demand. Lack of demand means low price. We want to buy low, so we want lack of demand in an item. Again, knowing that demand might eventually, and I use the word might, so it is a bet after all, that's all uh, investing is about making as much as possible educated guesses. If I knew the future, I would be rich. If I knew a lost orange box would be $400 in one year or 10 years, whatever, I would try to put all the money that I could into that box, which doesn't mean I believe in that box. No, no, no. I'm saying if I know, and I mean, I'm no, so 100% sure that lost origin is going to be $400, let's say a year from now or two years from now, let's say a year from now for, for just give you an example. If I knew and I was certain, I would go to the bank and just tell them, I'm, I know, I know it's happening. I can prove you. It's happened 100% sure. Or I'll go to my parents. Every once I know, I said, buy it, give him money, lend me money. I want to buy it one year time. I buy as much as possible. I 2x my money, but I was certain. So I would put all the money that I could and I'll be rich. Now, nobody knows the future. You can try to predict it. That's what investing is all about, making educated guesses. So that's what you want to do. You want to sell when there's hype and you want to buy when there is a lack of demand after you did your homework on the product you want to buy. And then last but not least, remember this is risky. We are every Pokemon investing just like any other investment is an investment. So it will carry some risk. And one thing I hate about people and there's some big Poketubers then say, oh, well, if if my investments go to zero, I'll just open them. Why? If if you're investing in this, then you're doing it for the sake of making a profit or at least preserve your capital and not make a loss. If you if you say that you're fine with all your investment going to zero, then we have a problem that I think you don't quite understand what investing is all about. Let me say, guys. Let me know what you think about this list. I'm curious to know if you have any other points you like to consider when you want to sell your investments. And obviously, if you enjoyed the content, I would highly appreciate it if you could subscribe and leave a like. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the Discord, and I'll see you in the next one.